To get started on this exercise, you should have downloaded the bar chart folder. And inside this folder, there's an After Effects file that we can go ahead and open up. Now, if you haven't done so already, you can double click on the main comp inside the comps folder and you can see that this is going to be made up of an illustrator vector file that has a variety of different layer layers. We're going to animate each of the little different bar graphs using a couple of different techniques. Now to animate each one of these green bars, we're going to need to first recreate each of the green bars. So to do this, let's grab our re regular rectangle tool and make sure no layers are selected. This will allow us to click on our fill color and we can use the little eyedropper tool to click on this green on the bar to select that specific kind of green. If your stroke is not set to none, you can hold down option until you've got no stroke set for it. Again, make sure no layers are selected. I'm going to zoom in so I can see this first bar. So we'll zoom out a little bit more. There we go. And I'm simply going to click and drag and create a new rectangle that's exactly the same size of the first bar that we have. Now that we've got one rectangle that we can animate, we can go down to our shape layer. Let's turn off visibility for these green bars. And let's go up to our tool panel and locate the pan behind tool. With this tool, we're going to move our central point, which is this point here in the center, to the bottom center. And if you hold down the command key, excuse me, the option key, it will automatically snap to that bottom central point. And that's where we want to be able to scale everything from. Now we can choose our regular selection tool and go down to this layer and let's hit return and rename it to 2015. With this layer selected, make sure your current time indicator is set to zero frames and zero seconds. Press the S key to open up your scale tool options and let's unlink the scaling for this one. We only want to scale the vertical height of it. For now, we're going to set the height of it to be zero. And this should shrink it all the way down from the top down to there. We'll set this to be the starting point. So we'll click on our little stopwatch and put a keyframe at frame zero. Then let's move forward to frame number 20. And since this one needs to go up to 50%, all we have to do is to change the second number to 50 and it will scale up from there. There we go. Let's select both of those and throw on some easy ease by hitting F9. And so if we played it, now you can see how it scales up from there. Now that we've got one created, all we have to do is duplicate it and change out the values for each. So with 2015 layers selected, we can do Command D and that will duplicate it. Hey, it automatically renamed it to 2016. And so now all I have to do is move that new one over. Oops, make sure you got your selection tool when you do that. Place it under 2016. And for this one, we can press the S key. And let's change our second keyframes value to match the value that is needed for 2016. In this case, it's going to be 80%. With that selected, we can hit Command D. And there's 2017. Let's move it over line up with 2017 value. Change its second value for 2017 to be 80 percent. Excuse me, 2016 should be 40 percent. I'm going to go back and fix that. So 2016, let's set that down to be 40. 2017 is 80 percent. Going back up one more time, Command D to get us our 2018 value. Press the S key and the 2018 value should be 70%. We'll move it over and change that second keyframes value to be 70. If we scrub back now, you can see how they all animate together whenever necessary. Now for this last one, this is going to be the average. Let's zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. We can go down to our 2018 value and hit Command D to duplicate it one more time. Let's rename it from 2019 to average. We'll take this duplicate one and drag it on top and line it in the center here. We'll open up the S scale factor. And in this case, we want our second keyframe to scale up and out. So I'm going to set the scale factor for both of them. The first one being 450 wide, and it's going to be 60% tall. Then we can back up to our first keyframe, 
and let our first keyframe also be 450 wide by zero tall. So now when that one animates up, it goes that far up for that one. Obviously we need to mask this inside of it. And so to do this, we're gonna go down to our chart here. Oops, excuse me. Excuse me, not the chart, the gray bars. And let's make a duplicate of our gray bars. We're gonna rename this our mask layer. And let's put this mask right on top of the average layer. Since we want to use this as a mask to mask off everything that's here on our average layer, if you need to, swap over so you can see your track mats and change the average to be masked off within that one. Now it'll stay nicely inside of there. Since we've lost our text on here, let's take our average text, which is that 600, and let's move it above our mask layer so at least we can see it now. Let's move our current time indicator to that 20th keyframe, frame 20. We've got our text layer selected, so let's press the P and Shift T to open both the position and opacity. We'll click the stopwatch for both of those since this is going to be the stopping point. But then we'll back it up to the 10th keyframe. And then we can set our position numeric value to be 800 and 92 to 480, so this will move just slightly. And then we can set our opacity to be down to zero. So now it'll move up and come into view just slightly as that's being animated. As with the other ones, let's select all of them and throw on some easy easing to make it look a little bit better. That's looking good. Now let's play around with the timing of everything. If we press the U key, this will close out all of our layers and we want each one of these to be offset by just a few frames. So let's select the 2015 layer and let's put our current time indicator to the one second and 10 frame mark. So we want this one to start playing. So we're gonna click on that layer and drag it until it aligns at one second and 10 frames. Then we can move over to two seconds, select the 2016 layer and drag it over then we can go to the 2017 layer. This will be at two seconds and 20 frames. And so let's move 2017 to there. And then let's select our 2018 layer, move it to three seconds and 10 frames, move it down yonder. And then finally, let's do our average layers. And we can drag them anywhere. So with our average, we'll move it forward just a bit. to there. Let's have the text also align on those two. So those all come up at the same time. Now when we click and play, each one is going to be offset. And the average comes up with it too. Once you're finished with this, save up your After Effects file. And then you can go down to export it to your render queue, upload both the After Effects file and the movie file.